Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with the Comms Prepper Dog. We have a channel update. I'm back in the States. My time in Bolivia is over. I've been back about a month now. Been real busy working around the retreat here and back at the house. But today we're actually going to make a video blending three of my hobbies. Flying my drone, the 3D printer, and amateur radio or emergency communications. Today I'm going to attempt to use my drone to fly up an Arden Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network node, which is a small travel Wi-Fi router made by GLINet, and I'll put a link down below, with the Arden firmware loaded on it. The gray module you see here was my first attempt, and it was a failure. It didn't work. And I think that's because the 2.4 gig flight control transmitter on the drone was overloading the front end on the receiver on that Wi-Fi router there. So version 2.0 has a 3D printed bracket that holds both my anti-collision part 107 lights, red and green, and the white ones on the top, with a 12 foot run of 550 cord going to another 3D printed cradle that's holding one of these GLI net routers with the Arden software in it. So the test today is to take the drone up with this Arden node tethered to it, the Arden node activated, I have three or four nodes around the retreat here now, log into the laptop and see if I can connect to that node. And the concept is, is during an emergency, if I don't have line of sight with anybody else here in the valley, I could put the drone up for a 20 minute period. Uh, FAA regulations allow for as high as 400 feet above ground level. It's a little too high, it's hard to see the drone. But I could easily put this drone up 250 feet with that Arden node, park it there for 20 minutes, and that would provide a window for other stations in the area to send and receive emergency communications. So I'm going to pause here, do my pre-flight check on the drone, turn on my anti-collision lights. Those lights are not required. They're only needed during the two half-hour periods in the morning and the evening, what they call civil twilight. But I like to use them anyway because it helps me see the drone. I've completed my pre-flight check, calibrated my compass, the drone is ready to go, battery is full on the drone, on the controller. I've powered up the ARD node, I have a red light which means I'm linked to the mesh network here that I have set up in the cabin or at the retreat. So now I'm going to go ahead and set the drone up and see what kind of connection I get here on the laptop. Now I can't video while I'm flying, so I'm going to set the camera down once again, get the drone in position, and then I'll come back. Be right back. So I hope you can see this. I've got the drone there. I parked it with the clouds in the background. And down below it, you should be able to see the node at the end of the 550 cord. The drone is sitting at about 28 feet. I'm going to go ahead and push that up to about 150 feet, and then we'll go over to the laptop and see what kind of connection my node on the top of the hill at the rainwater collector is making with that node. I'm definitely seeing an improved performance on the link quality, providing some vertical separation between the drone and the Arden node. I'm going to set the camera down and raise the altitude of the node. Be right back. All right, I got the drone up at 253 feet, and the node is underneath it, probably 15, 20 feet below it. And I'm getting some decent link quality or near letter quality I think that's what the NLQ stands for on this node but it's not as good as I thought it was going to be and that might be attributed to the small low cost nature of that device on there that GLI net and I'm starting to think that maybe a ubiquity bullet device might be small enough to have low weight and provide good coverage over an area but I think this is a good proof of concept that you can merge amateur radio with drones or civil aviation to support emergency communications. The flight time in the drones is roughly 20 minutes. Uh, they're GPS controlled, so it'll hold in that position until you bring it back. And if you had scheduled times in an area during an emergency, maybe at the top of every hour, you could put a drone up and bring more stations together, pass emergency traffic, bring your drone down for visual inspection, and recharging the batteries and you could support a wider area if you didn't have a tower so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down that means I got to turn the camera off to land the drone and kind of come up with a plan B and maybe get some feedback from you guys to see what you think about this concept I'll be right back 
All right, we completed a safe flight with the drone and landed the Phantom 3 standard. There's the node. Now what I did is I took the circuit board out of the commercial housing to reduce the weight and then I 3D printed that cradle and I'm running it with three AA batteries and put a little toggle switch on the top to turn it on and turn it off. There was a big improvement in the link quality providing that vertical separation but I think it either needs more or I might need a more suitable device maybe a ubiquity bullet radio that's a, a long cylinder I'll insert a screenshot of one that I can take out of the housing to reduce the weight it still has a small footprint and still get it up with the drone I mean you could probably put bigger nodes up there but the more payload you have you, the reduced flight time you have this unit here I'll just recycle the plastic and use that circuit card for some other node but I think this could be a good idea again let me know what your thoughts are and again it's good to be back in the US and as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper with a 3D printer slash drone slash amateur radio slash emergency communications video. And now that I'm home, I'll be able to make more videos till the end of the summer. And then I got more news this week that we're actually going back out overseas again. My wife has a new assignment. And this time we're going to Germany. So it looks like a two-year tour in Germany starting in September. I might stick around here till October and November to get through hunting season, but Germany's the next stop. Thanks for watching, everybody.